Hello everyone, today we'll be going over deep learning course series today and today we're focusing on neural network structures. Now, just a bit of a disclaimer, uh, this uh, topic is pretty dense so we're actually going to have two chapters for our concept overview and then we're going to have two chapters for our concept example as well to be able to help solidify our understanding because this part is quite a dense but just a bit of a forewarning. But to be able to segue in to our lesson, um, since today we're focusing on neural network structures, just to give a breakdown on what the structures are, let's imagine a network of neurons forming together to form a synaptic-like network, which are built with weights, biases, and activation functions. So a network of neurons built with weights, biases, and activation functions. And there's also optimization algorithms, which we will go over. Sorry. algorithms which which test the model's accuracy and prediction and there's also a variety of activation functions which we will go over in the second part of our concept overview along with the optimization algorithms as well and so mind you what we will be breaking down is that we're actually going to be breaking down some of the mathematical um, concepts inside of neural networks so this does require a, a fundamental basis between uh, linear algebra you can also pick up some combinatorics and calculus as well but from a fundamental standpoint since neural networks are comprised of vectors uh, mainly for input weights biases and activation functions um, to be able to build up to an understanding over vectors um, when we need to start with matrices, scalars, and then the vectors uh, to be able to garner and further uh, grasp a foundational understanding between the math that is over here. I am doing a linear algebra playlist uh, to be able to go over um, exactly those fundamentals as well, along with uh, combinatorics and calculus as well. However, for now, we are just giving a structural overview to garner a grounded understanding between how neural networks are built from a foundational formulated and structure standpoint. And so just to be able to give a breakdown of neurons, and this is our neuron function that we have over here, neurons or nodes are individual processing elements of a neural network. Neurons. Like the human uh, brain's neurons, which fire off electrical signals, these artificial neurons receive input, process it, and pass on the output. So the process data. For desired output. Weights are in a neural network and input data is fed into the input layer consisting of many neurons as there are features in the data set and each input neuron sets its signal to the neurons of the next layer which could be a hidden layer or in simpler uh, networks. Uh, the output layer directly. And we always know that every single neural network is comprised of three components. We have our input layer, one or more hidden layers, and then our output layer. The input layer is where the data is uh, already being fed in. The hidden layer, it could be one or more depending on the complexity of a problem. Then we have our output layer as well. And to give a breakdown on the math really comprised of neural networks, this is just really focusing on a neuron that we have here. So neuron will be denoted as Y. F is known as the activation function. And then weight. Weight of I 
refers to the weights and the connections to the neuron. Weights of the connections to the neuron. As in the next one or the previous one. And then X of I is going to be referring to the input values. And B is referred to as the bias term. And N is comprised of this is N, the number of inputs for the neuron. Puts to the neuron. And so just a break that up. There we go. Just for reference over here. Wait, put bias number and this is just a summation of everything all together and now to give a breakdown on a specific neuron uh, is specifically with weights and biases as depicted in the first picture so we have our weights as depicted right here based on the inputs that we have within a given uh, data set and then we have our bias as well and have a summation function leading to our activation function to then have a prediction. So specifically with weights and biases as depicted in the first picture, weights are parameters that determine the strength of the connection between the two, uh, between two neurons across different layers. So weights parameters that determine the strength of the connection. between two neurons. Across different layers. Uh, when one inputs um, data into a neural network and each piece of information or feature is multiplied by a corresponding weight as it moves uh, from one layer to the next. And these weights are crucial because they influence how much impact each input feature has on the network's final output. And to go over the weight matrix, the weight matrix is a structured arrangement of weights that represents the connection between two layers of neurons. And through the training of neural networks, we are processing the input data, as depicted up here. Uh, during the forward pass, just going through, when the network processes input data, the input vector, which is representing the data, is multiplied by the weight matrices of successive layers. And this operation um, computes the weighted sum of inputs uh, for each neuron in the next layer, and this result is then typically passed through an activation function uh, before proceeding to the next layer. Since uh, using matrices uh, to represent weights not only helps in organizing networks architecture, but also leverages efficiently uh, for computational libraries optimized for matrix, matrix operations. And to give a breakdown over our matrix operation, for our weights, W is going to stand for the weight matrix itself.
and then for M and N. So W for this W over here represents the uh, matrix. Single matrix, uh, the matrix single weight. Actually, we'll just call this a single weight. So with M refers to number of neurons. in the layer where the output will be calculated and N is the number of neurons in the previous layer that provides the input so number of neurons in the previous layer for our final And then meanwhile, for the following numbers beforehand, we're going to refer them as i and j. So if we have i and j over here, i refers to the index of neuron in the current layer. While j is the index of the neuron for the previous layer. Mm -hmm. So that's just break down our weight matrix. Now biases, on the other hand, So we already denoted what the weight is. Let's move this over here. Biases on the other hand. Allow the model to adjust the output. of each neuron depending on what data is fed will activate the neuron. in the neural network. Oh. In the neural network. So 
So this means that uh, biases enable the neurons activation function to activate or fire at different input values, uh, essentially shifting the activation function left or right, uh, depending on exactly what data is already fed inside of the neural network. Even if the data does not directly align with the origin or if the relationship between the inputs and outputs are complex and nonlinear, the bias, uh, biases serve an essential function to be able to activate for neurons as well. And now moving deeper into neurons, we'll be focusing more on the hidden layers. So hidden layers uh, they form the tr they form the training area training area for the model as the collection of neurons and these layers can be numerous and their complexity can vary vastly depending on the task that one is already applying and as data moves through each layer it's transformed getting closer to a decision or prediction with every step so each Uh, step of data moves hang on as data moves through each layer hidden layer the model discerns discerns the probability of prediction all right and now going over uh, the next part, now that we've already discussed between weights and biases between the two, as well as the structure of the neural network, we're moving over to activation functions and optimization algorithms for a brief overview of what they are. Activation functions, let me just zoom in. And there's a variety of them that we're going to go over in the next part. Activation functions are considered a catalyst within the system and they decide whether a neuron should be activated or not. Decide when a neuron, also as denoted here, that's our activation function. Activation functions decide when a neuron should be fired or not. And they essentially determine the output of that neuron to the next layer. And these functions introduce nonlinearity into the network, enabling it to learn and perform more complex tasks than a simple linear regression could. More complex tasks than linear regression. And uh, we'll be going over the uh, common types of activation functions in the next part. So that's just a brief overview of activation functions. But then the next part that we have, we'll be focusing on, on optimization, uh, optimization algorithms. So optimization algorithms
Optimization algorithms are applied um, after each activation function is considered for each neuron. And um, when they're applied uh, to each neuron during training, they measure how well the model's predictions align with the actual data. So they measure how well the model's prediction aligns with actual data. And the goal for optimization algorithms are to find the set of parameters which were included in the context of the model to match the best possible predictions by minimizing the loss function set, which is which the loss function is considered um, chances of inaccurate predictions overall. So they are focusing on providing the best possible predictions for the model. while reducing the size of the loss function. So we're just focusing on accuracy and prediction for the given model. And overall, optimization algorithms are crucial for training because of its application in backpropagation. So strong application. So I mean, like they really are. Um, so application in backpropagation. And during training, uh, the network uh, uses back, uh, back propagation to adjust the weights based on the error of the output. So adjusting weights as indicated by our matrix, depending on the output. depending on the error of the output. Let me just erase this. Uh, depending on the error of the output. And overall, this involves calculating the gradient of the loss function. The gradient of the loss function. with respect to each matrix this is weight. Let me just clean this up for you folks so you just get a full understanding and are able to see everything all at once. Give me one second. All right, and feel free to take a screenshot of the following. And now let's move over to our second part for our concept explanation, where we are going to be going over the specifics of uh, the different varieties of activation functions and optimization algorithms.
And so yeah, thank you very much for taking time to watch this. If you found this video helpful, be sure and feel free to please like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions, feel free to put it in the comment section. And as always, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.